we'll be looking at section 2.3, prime cuts of numbers. So we're looking at the prime numbers today. Before we do that, I wanted to make sure that I answered any questions you had about Fibonacci NIM or other homework questions. Did you have some problems you'd like to go over? Would anybody like to do another? Oh, you have one? Okay. There's a lot of 2.2. Like after the first two, there's so in this problem you're looking at the work that we did where you express numbers as sums of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers so we can look at one of your numbers in a bit um, and then we look at Fibonacci NIM for the rest of the problems I believe so these are actually the same types of types of questions they're looking at numbers as sums of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers To do that, you'll need to have your Fibonacci numbers available, so you should write them in a list while you're doing your homework, or pull out your list. Either I have to get out my calculator or my other list, so I'll just take a look at what I wrote down earlier. <clears throat> so suppose you have the number 30, and you have to write that as a sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers. You find the biggest number smaller than 30, that's a Fibonacci number. Okay, so for mine, the biggest number smaller than 30, that's a Fibonacci number, would be 21. And then you take your calculator if you need to and find out, well, how much more do you need to get to 30? Because I'm going to write a sum here. So 21 plus 9 would equal 30. So now I look for 9. Where does 9 fit? 9 would go right here. So the biggest number smaller than 9 in my list of Fibonacci numbers is 8. Now I'm up to 21 plus 8, which is 29. I have to get to 30, so I need one more, which is another Fibonacci number. So we're just always looking for the biggest number that we can to put into our sum. Do you want to give me an example that you have? Um, I had uh, the 28. Well, I had the 13 plus 5 plus 2, but it said it was wrong. 28? Mm -hmm. Oh, you need 21. Okay. So 21 is the biggest Fibonacci number we can get. That's smaller than 28. And then we need seven more. So seven, the biggest Fibonacci number less than seven is five. 21 plus five is 26. So I still need two more and two is a Fibonacci number. So we're always picking the biggest one we can. Then when it comes to um, Fibonacci NIM, you can have these same kinds of numbers, but when it comes to picking up sticks as a first player, you would pick up the smaller number. So there's some big examples there. Anybody want to give me one of their examples that was a fairly large number? Yes? 387. Okay, so 387. So I'm looking at my Fibonacci list, and I have 377 is the biggest number I can, so I'm going to put that as my first number. Uh, and then I need 10 more to get to 387. So 10, the biggest number, that's a Fibonacci number, and smaller than 10 is 8. So now if I add these up, I'm up to 385, so I need 2 more, and 2 is a Fibonacci number, so I'll put that on. So two is the number that you'd actually pick up as the first player 
in Fibonacci now. Okay, so once you write that sum out using the biggest Fibonacci numbers you can, then the smallest one at the end there is the one that will be um, so the next picked problem, out. So the two, two, um, the fourth question, when it asks, like, if you start with 686, six, you would go with the least amount? Exactly. First. Yep. Yep, so when you start with 686 sticks, you'll have the 610, and now you need 76 more, so that's going to be 55. 76 would fit in here, so the next biggest Fibonacci number is 55, and then I need um, 21 more, and so 21 is actually a Fibonacci number. I just checked my arithmetic here. So 21 would be how many you would pick up in Fibonacci now as the first player. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Then let's go on to section 2.3 where we're looking at prime numbers. The author starts out with the question, can you write 71? as a product of two smaller numbers. Product means, mul means multiplying. So are there two numbers we can multiply together to equal 71? So we take out our calculator and try. Well, 71 is not even, so it's not divisible by 2. Since 71 is not divisible by 2, it won't be divisible by any even number. Um, 71, does anybody know the rule to know if 71 is divisible by, well, you take out your calculator, right? But there's actually a rule, like if I give you a bigger number, and if you don't have your calculator, do you, does anybody know how you can tell if this number is divisible by 3 evenly? So the, the rule is to add the digits, and if the result is divisible by 3, then that number 1182 is divisible by 3. Uh, this is 12. 12 is divisible by 3. Four. Good. So 1182 is also. That only works for 3 and for 9. For 3 and 9, that works. So you just add the digits up. If the result's divisible by 3, then so is the number you're trying to divide. So 71's not divisible by 3, because 7 plus 1 is 8. 8's not divisible by 3, so neither is 71. OK, well, um, so that means that any multiple of 3, we don't have to worry about. 71 won't be divisible by multiples of 2 or 3. So I can skip 4. It's not divisible by 5, because because five numbers divisible by five end in zero or five. Uh, so that brings us to six, and we don't have to worry about six because that's even. Seven, 71 divided by seven, that's not gonna go, is it? Okay, we don't have to worry about eight because eight's even. Nine's divisible by three, so I don't have to worry about nine. How about 10? 71 divided by 10, 7.1. Well, I should have known that without using my calculator. At any rate, I don't have to keep going now. When, when I divide by 10 and my result is smaller than 10, then I'm done checking for numbers that divide into 71. Uh, because now, if it had been evenly divisible by 10, the result would have been a number smaller than 10, so I would have checked it already. Okay, so the answer is no. We're looking at prime numbers in 2.3, and 71 is a prime number. Let's write out the definition of a prime number. A natural number greater than 1 
a natural number greater than one that cannot be written as a product A natural number greater than one that cannot be written as a product of two smaller numbers uh, I, I got to fix that two smaller natural numbers there two smaller natural numbers is a prime number. Is a prime number. A natural number greater than one that cannot be written as a product of two smaller natural numbers is a prime number. So there's a number of different types of numbering groups that we're going to be looking at throughout the semester. And one of, one of those sets is natural numbers. So let's see what those are. And does anybody know what natural numbers are? We did talk about them once. Good, yeah, nice job. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're, the, they're natural to count with. So that's why they're called the natural numbers. They're, the, they're just what you would start counting with if you had a flock of sheep and you were living 3,000 years ago. So the natural numbers are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Um, and prime numbers then are some of the natural numbers. They're greater than 1 and they can't be written as a product. Product means multiply. Okay, so that's why 71 was prime. We couldn't find two numbers that multiply together to be 71. We couldn't find two natural numbers that multiply to be 71. Well, then the question is, why do we care about prime numbers? like I don't <laughs> well, hopefully you will hopefully you will if you don't yet yeah. uh, we care about the prime numbers because prime numbers are the building blocks of all the other numbers so all numbers come from the prime numbers at some level. For all the natural numbers are either prime numbers themselves or they're products of prime numbers. And all the other types of numbers that we'll look at will be quotients <coughs> of those uh, natural numbers or um, other, other derivations of the natural numbers. So first we get the prime numbers. Prime numbers give us all the natural numbers. The natural numbers lead us <coughs> to the rest of the numbers. Let's just write that theorem down, okay? The prime factorization theorem. <coughs> the prime factorization theorem. Every national number Every natural number greater than one every natural number greater than one is either a prime number is either a prime number or it can be expressed Or 
or it can be expressed as a product of primes. We will definitely look at an example of that. So every natural number greater than one is either a prime number or it can be expressed as a product of primes. So product means multiplying again. <clears throat> uh, how many of you do online banking? Any of you online banking or ever pay your bills online or PayPal or something like that? Your, your encryption there depends on prime numbers. The study of prime numbers is ancient, goes back to number theory which began more than 2,000 years ago. But the study of primes is newly relevant today as we do online encryption. So encryption depends on finding very large prime numbers. I brought a little article from Extreme Tech that talks about that. So there's a functional limit to the size of the numbers we can factor into primes. And this fact is absolutely essential to modern computer security. Pretty much anything that computers can easily do without being easily able to undo will be of interest to computer security. So modern encryption algorithms exploit the fact that we can easily take two large primes and multiply them together to get a new super large number, but that no computer yet created can take that super large number and quickly figure out which two primes went into making it. So we get these super large primes, multiply them together, and that's easy to do for a computer, but the result can't be easily taken the other way. It's not easy to find big prime numbers factorizations. So um, it's not an easy, a meaningless academic quest to better understand prime numbers since virtually all modern security re relies on the current limitations of that understanding. To give you an idea of how big these numbers are, um, in 2009 researchers networked several hundred computers together and spent the equivalent of about 2,000 years for a single computer using advanced factoring algorithms to factor the RSA 768 number. That is to say, a number with 232 digits. So that's how big these numbers are. A number with 232 digits put up by the RSA group as a factoring challenge. Proving it was possible to break the 768-bit encryption in non-universal heat death timescales is unacceptable for the security world, of course. So the standard has now moved to RSA 1024 using numbers with 309 digits. So 309 digit number is big, but it's not, I mean, it's not a million digits big. It's pretty big. But even that is too big for a computer to factor. So we're um, interested in prime numbers for cybersecurity. Let's go ahead and take a look at factoring smaller, <laughs> smaller prime numbers so we can see what this prime factorization theorem is talking about. So a factor means to write as a product. Sometimes I think about giving you PowerPoints and just having you print them out, but the, in math, the one who's doing the work is the one who's learning. And I figure that the more you write out, the more it will hopefully stick in your mind. So that's why I write them out together with you. Um, hopefully I don't go too fast, though. So let me know if I need to slow down. Okay. So we'll do this for a few problems. So we'll go ahead and start with 700 and just call that A so that we can write a couple, write B and C down without redoing all the all the writing. So there's more than one way to divide 700 evenly. What's one way to divide 700 evenly or factor it? Someone tell me a number that divides into 700. See, and I heard lots of voices because there's more than way, one way. So two is one way. And we'll put little branches here. And if you need to use your calculator, you can take 700 divided by 2 and get 350. 
Now, two is prime. Two is prime because it's um, one times two and that's it. There's no other way to write two as a product. How about 350? What's a number that divides evenly into 350? Ten. ten. Okay, ten. Okay, so put ten. Ten and 35. Now, 10 can be factored further, right? 10 is 2 times 5. Mm-hmm. Yep, and what would 35 be? Yep, 5 times 7. But now at the end of our branches, we have all prime numbers. None of the numbers at the end of the branches, 2, 5, or 7, can be factored any further. So we find that 700 has a prime factorization. Look at the end of your branches, 2, 2, 5, 5, 7. 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 7. So that is the prime factorization for 700. There's always a unique prime factorization. Mm -hmm. Did Why I lose something? 2 times 2? So we're looking at the ends of the branches? Oh, because you have to pick up that 2 up there. Exactly. The yep. There we go. Um, so you can double check that in your calculator if you want to. And there is only one prime factorization. If you had started out saying, well, 700 is 100 times 7, by the time you got to the ends of your little branches, there would only be two twos, two fives, and a 7 to multiply together, although you could write those in different orders. And is that the case for um, every number that yep. has a more result? Yep, every number that's, that is not prime has a unique prime factorization. So that's what our prime factorization theorem was saying. Here, let's try another number. How about 380? So what's the number that divides into 380? 10. Okay, 10. Great. 380 is 10 times 38. And 10, 10 is 2 times 5. Thirty-eight is even. When you're not sure what to do, you can check and see if the number is even, and then divide two out. So thirty-eight is two times nineteen, and nineteen is prime. So three hundred eighty is two times. I use the dot for times. You can use little x's if you like. Two times two times. Two. 5 times 19. Here's one for you to try, okay? 250. So go ahead and find the prime factorization of 250. I'll walk around and see how you're doing. If you're stuck, raise your hand. good at this very fast so you have two times five times five times five for 250 well, we're going to look at one method to find primes. Does anybody have any questions before we do that? One? Yes. For when we like, when it's 2 times 5 times 5 times 5, is there like, is that like the only way? Or is it like different ones? So 2 times 5 times 5 times 5 is the only way to multiply to get 250, but you could write it in a different order. You could you could put you know one of the two somewhere else, but it should be three fives and a two. Okay. Yeah. So what was your question? Could I just do like two times five to the Yep. Or you could say two times five to the third power. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. Well, we're going to take a look at one method for finding um, primes. This is a list of the numbers 1 through 100. Online students, you can print this off under class activities on Canvas. 
So I'm going to give you all a list here. So this is this method that we're looking at is going to be called the sieve of Aristophanes. So Aristophanes lived about 276 BC, and uh, what what he did was he um, what we what we're going to do is what he did, and that's to cross off numbers that are not prime. So we have the numbers one through 100. Uh, first, we cross off one because one is not a prime number. Prime numbers have to be bigger than one. And then we'll cross off, then we come to two. So two is prime. Two is bigger than one, and it's only way to write two as a product is one times two. But we're going to cross off all the numbers that are evenly divisible by two. Okay, so everything that's evenly divisible by two. So numbers that end in two. So I'm actually going to cross off this whole column. Uh, numbers that end in 4. All the evens are going to get crossed off when we cross off numbers divisible by 2. So we're crossing off all the numbers that end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. So now we cross off all the numbers that are divisible by 2, and so they are not prime because they're divisible by 2. And then we move on to 3. So we're going to cross off all the numbers divisible by 3. Now remember I told you the rule for that, that if you can add the digits up and the result is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3, which is pretty interesting. And if you're interested in number theory, you can see why that works. Yes. Oh, so do we have to do that for like all numbers for like 15, 25, 35, 45? Yeah. see if those are divisible by 3 too? Oh, do you want to hop right up to those? Okay, so the numbers that are divisible by 5 end in 5, right? So we could cross those off first if you want to to make it a little easier. So those aren't prime either? Nope. Numbers that are divisible by 5 are not prime. So numbers that end in 5 mm -hmm. or 0 are not prime. Okay, that lessens the ones you have to check for being divisible by 3, right? Okay, so... Well, why do we have to check to make sure everything's divisible by 3? Uh, so we're using the method that Aristophanes used to find primes. So we're going to find the primes by the ones that are not crossed off. No, I get that, but like, why do we try to see if everything's divisible by three? Like, why three? So if it's divisible by three, it won't be prime, and so we can cross it off. And there's more than one way to find the prime. So if you were thinking of going through a different way, you, you could. But we're using the, the way Aristophanes did. So we're crossing off numbers divisible by three and getting them out of here as not prime. Whoops. So if a number is divisible by three, it's not prime, so we're crossing it out. crossed off numbers that are divisible by 5. Now we'll cross off numbers divisible by 7. So if you know your 7's multiplication table, this, this would be where we take care of those. So 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49. It's the first one we had to cross off yet. Okay. Why are we so if it's divisible by 7, it's not prime, and so we can cross it off as not prime. So we're going through and crossing off everything that's not prime, and the way we're making sure we don't miss any is by crossing off everything that's divisible by 3, by 2, by 5, by 7, and so on. So 
So this doesn't seem to require more those numbers because they are like why not four for example yeah. oh so we didn't have to do four because if a number is divisible by four it's also divisible by two and we didn't have to do six because if a number is divisible by six it's also divisible by two and three so like for like 56 for example like why so 56 got crossed off because it was divisible by 2. So we're, we're crossing off all the numbers that are even div evenly divisible. So if anything like divides like quote unquote nicely, then it isn't prime? Yeah, you could say if it divides nicely, it's not prime. Um, so, let's see, numbers that were divisible by 7, we got up to 49, 63, 70, 77, 84, 91, so just, uh, just a couple there, 91 got crossed off. <clears throat> and now that brings us to 11. But that means we're done, because remember what I said earlier? If you take a number, we're going up to 100 here. If we take 100 and divide by 11, we get a number smaller than 11. That means we're done with this list, because if it had, if the result is a number smaller than what we're dividing by, we would have already crossed it off. Okay, so. Any number that would have been divisible by a number smaller than 11, we already crossed off. Yeah. Can I just use another, like, I guess, definition that you could use? What would be a nice definition? Uh, any number whose factors are only one in itself of prime. Yeah, so that's another way to describe prime. Um, well, it has to be a natural number, though. Well, yeah. yeah, so a natural number whose factors are only one in itself is prime. That's a nice way to describe it, too. Describe a prime. You like that one better? Okay. What did we say? Okay. okay. That is a nice way. Okay. Alrighty. So what you have left are prime numbers on your list. So I'll read them off in case you missed any. You should have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 97. Those are the only primes less than 100. Now if you go online, you can print out lists of prime numbers. Here's the first 100 primes, and, and the primes that we found are on this list. Um, and those are easily accessible online. This particular list came from your textbook author. Well, we're going to look at a question in here. The question is, what is the largest prime? What is the largest prime? So these are, this is a very interesting question because we need large primes in order to do encryption. If you're interested in encryption, your author has a very nice chapter on that that we won't be looking at this semester. The math's a little bit tricky, but it talks all about how uh, these prime numbers help us to make a public encryption prime number um, that's done in section 2.5. So, does anybody know what the largest prime is? Primes thin out. They get less and less. Here's the table of primes. 
Would there not be like a prime in like the millions? Um, that's a good question. Would there not be a prime in the millions? Well, this table is um, a table of how many primes there are. So on your list, if you count up what's left on your list of primes less than 100, there should be 25. That's 25% when you make a proportion. So 25% of the numbers less than 100 are prime. Notice when you just go to 1,000 and look at the primes less than 1,000, then you're down to 168, which is 17% about. They get thinner and thinner. When you get to a million, the percentage of numbers that are prime, we're down to 7.8%. And when you get to a billion, then you're down to 5%. They actually thin out in a predictable pattern, though, which is amazing to me. And it's amazing that someone noticed it, and someone noticed it without a computer. So Gauss and Legendre in the 1800s noticed this pattern. They were, they were brilliant, and they noticed that this pattern that we see of this thinning out approaches the number 1 divided by the natural log of whatever this number is. I just, I just can't imagine being so familiar with the natural log that you can look at its reciprocal, 1 divided by the natural log, and recognize this list as approaching this list. It's amazing that they did that. But at any rate, they're thinning out, so looking for large primes is harder and harder. They're scarce. They're always interested in uh, people who do computer encryption are always interested in what large primes come up, and when people find a large prime, it's a big deal. It turns out there is no largest prime. And it's that theorem that um, Gauss and Legendre came up with that can tell us that. Well, actually, we'll use another theorem besides that. We're going to use one even older than that to prove that there is no largest prime. So periodically throughout the class, I'll be asking you to prove something. In this instance, we're going to prove there is no largest prime. Like, you mean that it kind of goes on forever? Mm -hmm. Yep, it goes on forever. And we're going to have a couple of questions that arise just because I'm asking you to prove it. The first question is why prove theorems? So mathematicians prove theorems because then they are the building blocks. They are irrefutable facts in the math world, um, absolute truths that we can base future math on. But I'm going to ask you to prove theorems personally, you personally. So why am I going to put you through this, right? <laughs> it's not easy to prove theorems. Uh, the reason that I would want you to prove a theorem is to increase your reasoning skills. If you remember the first day of class, I talked about Abraham Lincoln going and setting aside his lawyer studies and taking up Euclid's geometry because he wanted to improve his reasoning skills. And that's one of the things that we're going to do too. By proving, by proving the ge geometric proofs of Euclid, Abraham Lincoln was able to increase his reasoning skill and help you help um, to make a persuasive argument. So this will help you learn to make a persuasive argument. In fact, it should be an irrefutable argument if you have all of your facts in order and each one is unassailable. So let's talk about what a proof is. I like the um, quote from Peng Shi at Duke University. Peng Shi said that a proof is a sequence, a sequence of impeccable logic
a sequence of impeccable logic leading to the inevitable conclusion. So even if you're not going to be an attorney, I imagine you'll want to be able to have persuasive arguments that lead to an inevitable conclusion that you're trying to make. Well, what we're going to look at proving is that there is no largest prime. So first, before we actually attempt the proof, we look at the strategy. So we're going to find a prime larger than, and I'll put a box here because we're going to find a prime larger than a particular number. Uh, we're going to start small though. Okay, so this number is going to change, but we'll start small. Find a prime larger than 3. Find a prime larger, prime larger than 3 by finding a number by finding a number with a remainder the remainder of 1 when divided by and I'll put a little box cuz that's going to change Yes. So Let's look at finding remainders. That's a good question. What is a remainder? So here's how we find remainders. Um, so someone pick a number bigger than three, just any number bigger than three, and we'll look at. Somebody give me a number bigger than three, please. Five. Okay. Five, and then I heard th seven, so we'll do five first. Okay, so take, take five and divide by two. So you can use your calculator if you want to, okay? And with bigger numbers, that might be the thing. Um, the whole number that you get is how many times the two goes into the five. And, and you do need to do this because we're going to be using this in uh, the next section and this section, okay? You're going to need to be able to find remainders. So if I do 5 divided by 2, I get 2.5. So the 2 I put up here, and then I say 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we subtract and we get 1. So the remainder is the 1. That's the remainder. Okay, so um, this is a number. 5 is a number larger than 3 with the remainder of 1 when it's divided by 2. Let's check when it's divided by uh, 3. So when I take 5 divided by 3, I get in my calculator 1.66 repeating. So 1, the whole number goes on top. 1 times 3 is 3. And when I subtract, I get 2. So my remainder is 2. Okay. So um, 5 is not the number I wanted because I wanted a, a number whose remainder is 1 when it's divided by 2 and divided by 3. Well, let's, let's try the 7. Somebody said 7. Okay, so 7 divided by 2. When you use your calculator, you get 3 point something. So you put the 3 on the top. 3 times 2 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. So that has a remainder of 1. Okay. Uh, now let's try the 7 divided by 3. 7 divided by 3 in your calculator, you get 2 point something. 
you put the 2 on the top, 2 times 3 is 6. So you put the 6 there and subtract, and that's a remainder of 1 as well. 7 is the number I was looking for. 7, okay? Uh, you notice it turned out that 7 is prime. Seven is the number that when you divide by two, you get a remainder of one, and when you divide by three, you get a remainder of one. And it turns out seven is prime. Yes? Why are we saying like we had to divide by two or three? So uh, as we do more examples, you will see why we pick the two or three. So be patient, um, just wait. So it turns out another way to write seven is the two times the three plus one, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. And, and that's why when you divide by 2 or 3, you get a remainder of 1 because of this plus 1 on the end. So now we're going to find a prime larger than 4, okay? And I'll just put dot, 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 okay? Because we're going to do the exact same thing we did up above. Find a prime larger than 4 by finding a number with a remainder of 1 when divided by, yeah, 2, 3, or 4. So up here we did 2, 3, because 3 was the number. So now we do 2, 3, 4, because 4 is the number. So if we say find a prime larger, find a prime number larger than 5, then it would be 2, 3, and 5? Mm-hmm, yep. Yep. Yep, if it was 5, then we would be using 2, 3, 4, 5. And notice how the 7 was 2 times 3 plus 1, and that's what gives us a remainder of 1. That's what we can do to find our number here. Okay, so we're going to take 2 times 3 times 4 plus 1. So this will create a number that has a remainder of 1 when it's divided by 2, or divided by 3, or divided by 4. We'll have a remainder of 1. So, anybody have that figured out what that is? Yeah. Well, I have another question. Okay. So then if it was like a prime number larger than 6, it would be 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then again? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, 6. 6 would be 2, two three, four, five, six. 4, 5, 6. Yep. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yep. yep, so we're getting a pattern. We're getting a pattern, and we're going to see why does that help us find primes, because this isn't prime, is it? Did anybody figure out what this is? 25. 25, that's not prime. Okay, so 25 is not a prime number. However, 25 has a prime factorization. What is the prime factorization of 25? 5 times 5. Five, the number in the prime factorization is a number bigger than four, a prime bigger than four. So we are looking for a prime bigger than a certain number, four in this case. So we took two times three times four plus one because that would give me a number that would have a remainder of 1 whenever I divided by 2, 3, or 4. And even though the 25 is not prime, its prime factorization has to have numbers bigger than 4 for its prime factors. It couldn't, it couldn't be evenly divisible by 2, 3, or 4 because those would have a remainder of 1. So in the prime factorization, you have to have a number bigger than 4, which is 5. Here, let's do, let's find a prime bigger than 5. Let's take 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 plus 1. I think it's bigger than that. 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 plus 1? 121, thank you. 121. So um, if you divide 121 by 4, there's a remainder of 1. If you divide it by 3 or 2 or 5, there's a remainder of 1. Uh, 121 is not prime, though. However, what is 121's prime factorization? 11 times 11, yeah. 
So we get the prime factorization is 11 times 11. So that has a prime, 11, larger than 5. So then any number that like we get as a um, sum or product, um, like even if it's not a prime itself, it'll still work because it'll have a prime factorization? Very good. You summed it up the argument. Even though the number we get is not prime, it'll have a prime factorization with a prime larger than the number we're looking for because all the numbers 5 or smaller divide leaving a remainder of 1. So the prime factorization, the number we get is either prime or its prime factorization has a prime larger than this number that we're looking at over here. Well, that's the strategy of our proof. We unfortunately have to interrupt in the middle, and we will pick up here on Monday and look at it more carefully. Um, have a good weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Don't forget to check your homework Sunday night. Okay, set your alarm, double check you, and you have your homework done.